you, John. Not sure if the microphone is working or not, but uh, thank you, John, again, for the, um, and all the previous speakers for excellent presentations this morning. Like, I hope we can match now the quality of presentations and the, the level of interest. But uh, anyhow, this is update number seven, as you can see. We have done uh, for, you know, the, the people in the audience that are not aware of the pilot project, we have been working since January on this project. So feel free to go online and check all the presentations. We have all the videos and PDFs there. So today, what we're talking about, well, of course, as we all know, it's prefabrication. And I'll be doing a five minutes introduction and then there will be presentations, you know, uh, Paul Sexton is going to speak on behalf of Nugent Manufacturing. And Keith as well is going to speak, you know, about their <coughs> involvement on the project. We kept this presentation very short. Um, I managed to keep it under 100 slides. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, just hold on to your seats because like, look, if you miss one, you know, we have quite a few per minute, you know. So what have we been doing over the last uh, few months? Well, I think we all deserved a good break, you know, for a few months, we just completely ignored the panel project and we were involved in some kind of a beach interaction modeling on the beach. So, and, and some of us then, you know, checked also, you know, small scale uh, simulation of extreme causal erosion. It's quite interesting. I think we should have used actually prefabrication elements, you know, so that it would withstand the forces of nature a bit better. But look, what is prefabrication? Like you have, a, you know, quite a few different types. You have total building prefabrication, modular systems that architects seems to like a lot as well, and you have elemental prefabrication. And what about the experience? Do we have, you know, as architects or engineers, the necessary experience or even like the general professions? Like if you go back in history, like you can find, you know, references even in the Bible about prefabrication. Like for instance, the Temple of Solomon, you know, was prefabricated apparently, you know, in, in major sections. And it's only a few years later that, you know, you know, Langs, this what, a few years, like a few hundred years, um, you know, Philip Gagan was uh, employed at Langs in the UK <coughs> that in post-war period, they were doing a lot of prefabrication to, um, you know, satisfy the demands of the lack of housing, you know, so he gave us quite a good insight into the prefabrication aspects on the pilot projects. And his designs were quite, you know, um, heavily influenced by Har Harbrocken's flexible design concept, which means like, look, very often we have a notion of prefabrication gives you a very kind of strict adherence to certain rules and certain limitations of uh, architectural designs, but it's still possible if you have an open mind. So we also were involved uh, with ICON in a prefabrication project in Glen Cree, the Center for Reconciliation, that was in 2006. So we did a full BIM model for that. And also in our practice, we deal with prefabrication all the time with timber frame constructions. So this was actually a 3D D DWG. So we're hoping now that you know more uh, companies are going to move towards the IC platform or any other platform that we can integrate. So the pilot projects, like what type of prefabrication are we talking about? Like total, you know, building prefabrication wouldn't really be, you know, suitable. But but it does exist. You can see here the micro compact home, which is fantastic, just built within a factory, pre-finished and just craned into place with a small scale, of course. We also have very interesting uh, examples of modular prefabrication all the way back to the 50s. And also here, Citizen M, I would welcome, you know, I would encourage you to, to have a look on the internet. It's a modular hotel system where you have the stack of all the bedrooms and link it up to <coughs> corridors. And also you have modular prefabrication in relation to, you know, futural, you know, futuristic approach where they even print and prefabricate the units by extrusion and on site, you know, just close to the site. We may come there, you know, robotics will improve over time, of course. But like in terms of the, the pilot project, elemental prefabrication is the most relevant. You know, we're talking about like slabs, roof panels, stairs, and steel structures. So we had a few workshops online, of course, to see like, look, which way are we going to go? We had a few sound issues at some point in time, and that's where technology not always works. So at, at some point we had to resort to you know, like sign language, you know, so it doesn't always work, but it was still, you know, we got our ideas across. So we decided to share the model. And, you know, we had a series of ISC files. We combined them all into, um, into a Tecla BIM site as a federated BIM model. So we can turn the one off, the one, you know, 
on and off and uh, check for uh, clashes as well. It's, it's very easy to use it's, again as a free app. It looks like we all do <laughs> a promotional uh, presentation now for TechLab today, but um, it, is, it is a free tool, so I would really encourage everybody to even have a check and see what its capabilities are. So, you know, in here, like you can see, you can embed also comments about, you know, the, the, roof, the roof system, you know, we sent to Kingspan, for instance, uh, you know, we were saying, like, look, you can use a KS1000 <coughs> roof panel type. And uh, they came as, you know, to, to us with a very interesting proposal, which we see after. So we saved that um, federated uh, model as a Tecla BM size model with all the comments. And then we, you know, uh, we gave it to Solibri, Nugent Manufacturing as well, of course, and uh, Kingspan. But before going there, you know, since we didn't, uh, we were not successful in appointing uh, prefabricated concrete manufacturing outfit to look at the concrete elements. And as an architect, we're always like wondering, like, could it be done for the wall, the main feature wall in front of the building? So this is just an example of, of how you could do it, you know, the existing elevation here, the street elevation, you know, this is just a subdivision of the panels, how it could be done. So the initial design for, you know, the ones of you that are not really familiar with the project, you know, this is the way it looks. This is an exploded view of how it could look. You know, of course, you know, this panel will have to be you know, cut in half. Uh, it all depends really on transport options. Where are you going to do it? Prefabricated, it's going to be on site, it's going to be off site. And then these are considerations, of course, to, uh, you know, to address. Just a quick image to show like, how it could be crane into place. But you can see that crane is, is just not being used. <laughs> slight, slight mistake there, but look, it gives an idea. Um, <laughs> And then, of course, it's an architectural consideration to have. You know, prefabrication is all well and good. You have a pre-finished product, factory settings. I mean, it's fantastic. We architects love it, but you have to consider the joints and all the rest. So if you design it with that kind of prefabrication in mind, it's good to do it at a very early design stage. So uh, we sent all our files to Celebri to, to check for our model integrity. Uh, we had a, actually a workshop very successful actually a few days ago with the whole team we're all there learning about how, how to, to do uh, code compliance checking, and they had a look at our model. And of course, uh, you know, we were involved in, in the model, the making of the architecture model, and they came up with some, some issues, like classification issues that may not have been correct. Um, there were also some, some issues with some stairs, small stairs in, in some areas. But anyway, they were all um, minor issues. And it's, we have to say that it's a very quick demonstration of the code compliance uh, checking and I think that's hugely relevant, uh, especially now with the new regulations <coughs> coming into force, where you can check, you know, for compliance with Part M or <coughs> any other uh, uh, building regulations that could be automated quite easily in the office using Solibri or I'm sure there are other tools as well. <coughs> There's another issue there. Um, it's like a file, the M&E file. Actually, uh, they notified us that like it's it's slightly in midair, you know, slightly too high above the building. And indeed, like when we assembled uh, the building, uh, it was like uh, 80 meters, you know, offset. We could fix it in Tecla, but it's very important, and that should be part of the kind of a the BIM implementation plan that everybody issues, you know, proper files with proper uh, project origins. So now I'm going to hand over to Paul, which will uh, speak about uh, Newton Manufacturing input. Thank you. Great. I've been asked to um, speak on behalf of, of, of Pearson Van and Newton Manufacturing. And just through to their their their, their work workload, um, just a, just a little bit first about uh, Nugent. Nugent have been um, were, were, was founded in in, in ninety nine <coughs> to manufacture structural steel, secondary steel work, um, balconies, fires, escapes, a whole range of, of, of steel structure. And they started with three employees and grew up to over um, four million a year, and over thirty employees. And they've done work for uh, on the Viva, Viva Stadium, Microsoft DBs, and also also. Um, work in Diageo at the moment, if you're, if you're down the same past St. James's Gate, you see the steel work there. That's, that's them. <laughs> this is also a structure they did in, in 2011, it was their Chelsea Flower Show, and, and they did the, the steel fabrication work for, for Darren McGavin, and the, his gold medal um, win there. Um, Pierce, Pierce and Van is actually, his background is as a, as a, a apprentice structural um, fabricator, so a structural fabricator who's moved into detail, and I think that's just, it, it really is great if someone who, who's able, able, able to model but also has an appreciation of real life and, and, and what, you, what you have to do. 
So the pilot model, we got such a huge amount of data, it's impossible to present it all here, and then the huge amount of files. But this is, again, you've seen some of these before. These are the ty type of outputs, full schedule of all parts and pieces that would have been, that would have come with, with the model. And, and then uh, this is an example just of, of, the, of the stairs to the side where it's broken down to pieces. And if you just look at the very key element to look at the health and safety aspects of how weight, how, if particularly with manual, manual handling, how, how heavy particular pieces are going to go and how, how, how you're going to crew that, not just with crane gauge. So again, typical fabrication drawings, pretty much fitting straight, straight out, of, out of the model and annotated straight, straight out of the model result in the numerical control um, files for the CNC machines. So these are a DSTV um, um, uh, standard, which is a German steel construction association standard that, that, that they created. But to look at it, I kind of like these kind of formats because it really is very simple. And to, to emphasize the size of the point, it's like binary for, for computers, that it's, it's very, very simple. For a machine manufacturer, they need a very, very simple fo format. So, so while on the face of it, all these technologies are, are very graphic, 3D and, and it, it looks great at the bottom line. This is the kind of real stuff that you that you want. So just taking the stairs for example, that's a, a Tecla export. New I've uh, been using Tecla since about 2004, version 11, and um, and it would have been usual in that respect, I think, in in, in Ireland. But this is a Tecla um, export to IFC just of, of the stairs to show that the the, the the basically the quality of of the of the, of, of the output. Again, different different aspects, all the inf information that's, uh, that's associated with different aspects. We have the, the bolts switched on in, 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 in this case. Um, again, some of the steel framing around uh, the single story podium at the time. The, the pilot project, unfortunately, from maybe from a structural point of view, wasn't really too exciting because um, there, there, there wasn't really that, that much to it. But um, I think we, it, we, we um, were hoping, at least we're, we're hoping that it would show some of the principles in, involved. This is a two-story section to the front, and uh, we've used some um, Pierce's used some um, purlins, and that'll become relevant in the middle. So, so taking back to Tecla, Tecla BIM site, and uh, um, this is the structural model in, in, in Tecla BIM site. So we had some you would have seen this the last time we presented with some uh, precast units on some on some basic uh, steel framing, and integrating the the Tecla model over it, you'll see straight away that. I didn't appreciate this straight off, but you can see there's there's been a bit of um, the, the the Tecla uh, file, the IFC file was was um, uh, modified by the detailers to to um, make the, the detailing process much more efficient. So that has a so that's that's the, that's the Tecla model switched on, and you can see that that has an impact. So when a change is made, there's an impact on on other trades. So the precast labs that, that we had. If the precast units and the structural steel work were all integrated and associated, well, that maybe would have happened. But then, who has control of all that? So, so this this was, was all part of a, of, a, of a of a back and forth. And obviously, my some of, some of my uh, slab detailing was was a bit too over enthusiastic there. So, um, looking at, at at the at the at the front section, um, again, this is the the input from from Pierce, and you can see, okay, he's chosen to use some some purlins. We had a timber frame structure. For different because it's just a, a pretty small section of room. In, in these type of projects, because of the scale is so small, it's, you're nearly in a halfway point about what's the best kind of solu structural solution or what kind of builder maybe is going to be using using it. So again, like the high the high level of detail. Again, we have the the, the bolts um, uh, is, is, is switched off in this, and again you can see really up up close and on, on, on personal with the, the model. And there's no end of, of shots. We said before that that a picture is a. It, um, picture speaks a thousand words, a BIM model is effectively a, a thousand uh, pictures. So this is the, the highlighted section is actually the, the, the stairs object that would have been modeled originally in the original authoring tool and, and then that's, that's overlaid with, with the, the Tecla, Tecla model. And again, you can see the, the quality detail. I'm, I'm, um, the, the, I'm, I'm a member of the iStruct D and I'm, I'm the iStruct D representative to, to CETA. And so I'd be remiss not to just highlight that there's a document there that we've had since 2002 about the use of computers in, in engineering calculations, and um, particularly with respect to some failures that have happened because um, of, of, of maybe the garbage in, garbage out. So with all modeling, it's, it's, all, about, it's all about validation and verification of, of, of the model, and whether that's model for fabrication or model for, for design or analysis. I will say one thing about IFC. My experience of IFC has been actually uh, very good. 
I haven't had too many issues, but I have seen issues like this, and that people, anyone has looked at maybe IFC, they might have come across this type of thing where you can see, obviously, this is, this is, it, this is rubbish, but you get translation issues sometimes. There's 355 meters, the floor slabs are over here, from, from here. So, but for me, I don't see this, this is a problem. I just see that it's really, it's about communication, and communication is a, is a two-way thing. If you're going to pass information to someone, you have to give it to them in a format that they can, they, they, they can interpret properly, otherwise you're, you're effectively just dumping on them. And lastly, I'd say that, that the reason I, I, I talk a lot about issues with, with, with the, the, the quality and the veracity of information, this is a, a, a famous, um, I suppose, um, description of structural engineering by, um, by a, an anonymous author, well, but it, it's really about, you know, it's real life is, is, is different. Computer, computer software can make everything seem to be perfect, and that's why the, 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 the experience of the steel industry and also the precast industry and also with, with the likes of, of Kingspan are really, are, 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 I think, are really showing the way of, of, of what we need to be, what we, what we need, to, need to be doing, but we need to kind of keep it real. So I'm just going to pass on to, um, to um, Keith now again, and he'll just, he'll just fin finish it up for us. Thank you. So I'll just quickly uh, run through some of the, <coughs> the steps that we've taken. Now, just uh, in terms of the time we've had with this, it probably only came to us about two weeks ago, um, and we, we only had a, a day or less than a day to, to spend on it. But what, what we did was to look at the pilot model and selectively pick a few, a few parts of the model to, to apply some Kingspan product to. Now, I think we've got a combination of roof and wall <coughs> panels as well as some of the benchmark create um, system we, we spoke about earlier. So I guess really in terms of the, the major steps, um, we imported the, the IFC model into Tackler Structures. We, the, the name we refer to that package as internally is KingCAD. It's our sort of you know, extended version of, of Tackler Structures, so it has all of our, our macros and plugins in there. Um, but they're reference uh, objects or, or files only really at that stage. Um, there was a, a, a filtering out of any obstructive or irrelevant surfaces just to allow you to, to see what you need to see to apply the, the, the Kingspan uh, product to, to the building. Um, 2D elevations and, and plan views. And then we're into um, <coughs> the, kind of the setting out of the Kingspan roof and, and wall sheeting planes, uh, checking for squareness and, and class issues. Um, an example of an issue, and we've got a few here, and I, and I guess these you know, may be as a consequence of, of the fact that it's a, a pilot project and everyone's kind of faced with time constraints, but we do see this sort of stuff in the real world as well, and it, it kind of links back to the question that was asked earlier. Is it a cultural issue? Is it a real issue? I, I think it's both, to, to be fair, uh, and, and it should improve over, over time as people evolve and, and start to, to get to grips with what's, what's required. But um, you can see here we, we had... Um, the modelled wall protruding through the roof plane, so obviously the, there's something there to be rectified by the designers. Um, issues with the, the set outs not being perpendicular, so you can see I think uh, on, the, on the next slide as well, we, we've got issues here with the uh, the purlings not, not being lined up as well. So there's just a number of things which you know were needing to be corrected on the fly. Now I guess in a collaborative scenario, you'd probably be doing the, the two-way thing and asking the, the owner of the, the model to, to correct those uh, errors so that you then can, can continue, but we just took the, the view that, you know, for expediency, we'd just make the, the corrections and, and kind of get on with it, really. Um, so again, it's, it's really just sort of snapshots of the, of the stages we've gone through. Now, this is really one of the, the many plugins that, that we have to the Tackler system, uh, and you can see You've got a floating toolbar sitting above the, the main Tecla, Tecla Structures application. Uh, a lot of tabs on there which then have numerous uh, parameters, drop down menus, etc. They're parametric, they're uh, working in a very similar way to our SAP system, so it's variant configuration. If you choose uh, a value for option A, that will then drive the, the next menu choices based on valid uh, configuration. So it's applying business rules, engineering rules, etc. Um, so we can then, you know, sheet a roof and add roof lights in and uh, gutters and flashings and, and stuff like that. Ultimately, it'll produce the, the bill of materials or the material list that, that we were seeing earlier, and that can be uploaded either for quotation purposes or for sales order entry and then production orders and then later still onto the, uh, the production line side, uh, the, the CAD CAM end of things. So, again, you can just sort of see tidying up of, uh, of some of the 
components had been added, so just making it, I guess, cosmetically uh, accurate. I guess some of this stuff would be cut on site, so if you were to leave the model looking like it would be in the real world in terms of how long the products would be, you'd have things sticking off the end and stuff, and that might not look right for the design team or the client. So um, Martin, who, who did the modeling here, would tend to just go and clean it up, even though that would be cut on site, just to make it look, look right in, in the model itself. Um, so again, you know, you can see just you know the various stages of, of applying the products. Um, again, more bespoke tool sets and macros here for flashings, etc. Uh, and I'll, I'll skip forwards now. You can see the create system coming in, um, and this sort of elevation now it's on screen. It's a very simplistic version of, of what create is, but it's just to show that you can have a you know unique configuration of panels and cassettes on on a wall, different colours, finishes, etc. To, to achieve an overall design aim. Uh, and that would then be kind of you know prefabricated, so it's uh, something we can we can do. And I guess the the challenge for IT is that uh, and, and Kingspan as a business is that obviously people want to push the the envelope in terms of design, and that then leads to to increased sophistication in the, in the manufacturing process. Now, I think we can cope with that from a technology perspective, but we need to be given accurate information up front, really. And, and early involvement, I, I think, is is key. Uh, at the back end of this, and obviously we're exporting the IFC model back to allow it to be uh, included in the federated model so that you know you can turn it on and off in BIM site and see the the, the Kingspan products that we've we've applied. Um, and I think there was a yeah this was just checking the, the, the model origin I guess about the, the different IFC models that align to, to one another. So that's pretty much what we did in a in a very uh, shortened <laughs> version. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it. Yes, well, we're almost finished. It's just uh, to say that next month uh, we'll have another session at this and we'll last be discussing one. That's the, last one. the last one, so don't <laughs> miss it. Um, just like we'll have the lessons learned, what to do, what not, you know, what not to do, of course. We have a, a very interesting 4D simulation that is in the working <coughs> world. It's being prepared by PPM and we'll have a BIM for uh, FM and then also an extended Q&A session. And the whole thing will also be presented at the BIM gathering in November, so I really encourage you to uh, attend that as well. So it's going to be a very exciting lineup of speakers. So uh, you can find uh, details online as well on that.